Sherry, we're here in a hotel, and you're homeless, disabled. Um, tell me about it. Well, um, I'm 58 years old, and like you said, I'm disabled. I moved here with my niece. We had planned to come to this area and kind of rent an apartment together because with both of our incomes behind us, we could do fairly well. And um, she had gotten into trouble up in, the up in the northern area, and I didn't like being there at all. And so it just seemed like a good idea to come. And then um, there was a lot of misinformation given about finances before we got here. And uh, we got to this, mo what ended up is my brother-in-law, he's not really my brother-in-law, he's like a nephew-in-law, he's her brother-in-law, paid for the first week for us to stay at this motel while we figured out what to do. And for the first whole week, I couldn't get ready to even get out of bed. So I'm running around trying to decide what to do. I have one storage room and a half a U-Haul truck full of stuff and I gotta get it empty. So I got on the phone, got that taken care of, it cost some money, but I, I rearranged finances that are now catching up with me to get that truck loaded, unloaded and into another storage array, which was another bill. Right. So now I'm here, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, it's almost payday and we should be just fine. And uh, Rita's given her income to this woman and she said, well, I think I'll have about $300 to spend. I go, Rita, you told me you had 720. And she goes, I know, but I got these other fines now that I didn't tell you. Right. And I said, well, uh, you know, we'll just have to aim our sights a little differently and look at a different area. And I said, don't worry, we'll, you know, we'll get it. And uh, so just as time passed, she finally got up and started doing things. You know, I kept t telling her one more day away from being homeless. The night before our um, this expired for us to stay here, I had gotten information about Paul Cruz from um, a friend of my niece's. And so I called and I was scared to death because you know, most people say no or you need to go to their church for a month or two months before they believe right. you're they in trouble. Right. right. And uh, amazingly enough, he said, yeah, just go tell them that I'll then I'll call him tomorrow, and the motel was just cool about it. Yeah, sure. And so that happened. <laughs> so you're you're with your, your, your a relative mm -hmm. in the place you're staying, and you got evicted. You came here hoping that you could, you know, split the bill of living in a hotel, which is homeless. And uh, a relative took off, and on your limited income, you can't even afford the hotel here. Right. And I never intended to moved to a hotel except for maybe a week while we found a place to live right and then found out we that we had come here with no money and and you know when i walked in the first thing is you said i never thought i'd be homeless at 58. who does i mean i'm supposed to be put together in a home and you know have my house ready to have grandchildren and you know this is a time of my life that that should be looking at retirement and here i am homeless you know, it's terrifying. And with your disability, both SSI and SSDI, it doesn't even pay for a hotel, much less first and last to get into an apartment or another house. No. No, it doesn't. Not at all. It's $760 a month, and that doesn't go very far at all. And, you know, I get some food stamps, but you know how high gro groceries are. Yeah. You know, it just, everything is, is hard. And it would I thought it would be so much easier with a roommate, but and I thought I knew her. She was family. I'd known her my whole life, but it's not always easier with somebody else. Okay. Well thank goodness Paul came and helped. Oh, I don't know what I would have done without him. So what's your future like? Um yes this morning I woke up and I thought, well, here I am, you know, just going day by day, you know, if he call, if I call him and he answers, then I can have today, and it was scaring me, and I called a crisis worker that I had talked to yesterday, and she goes, now, you know, take, get, catch your breath, and she goes, what do you have to do today? You have the room, and so I had two plans of things I needed to, I have to get to see a doctor, I have bronchitis, 
and it's going to turn into pneumonia if I don't see a doctor. Right. So I have to contact them and then um, find out about the career opportunities in the area. So, so even though you're disabled, you're trying to supplement your income and keep busy. Uh, first of all, I have to supplement my income because I'll never get out of here. And I need to be busy. I need to be active. And, and I am an active person, you know, even though I have limitations. If you had three wishes, what would they be? Um, that nobody would ever have to be homeless and so stunned by it like I am. That I would have planned my finances better when I was younger. And um, that I wouldn't be so worried and about right now and just terrified that, you know, what else is going to happen because it just, I don't think it can get worse. Thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you. And thank you to Paul, who really gave me hope.